with my son's leukemia journey, I've learned a little bit about um, MTHFR and a genetic mutation, mm -hmm. and that opens up the can of worms of folic acid versus folate. Yep. Can you speak to that? I sure can. Thank you. Matter of fact, one of the subjects that was on that meeting I was at last week was about just exactly that. I had an opportunity to spend uh, an hour over dinner with a researcher who has a big focus on that. For those of you who don't know, okay, um, folic acid, you probably know this, is an important nutrient, right? It's one of the essential vitamins and minerals, member related to the B vitamin family. It's really, really critical. It comes to us from the food supply as folate, okay? Uh, comes to us in the diet, in the supplement supply as folic acid. Folate is simply folic acid that's been reacted to something to create a, a stable form of it, okay? We deliver it as folic acid. Um, whether it comes as folate or as folic acid when it enters your, your gastrointestinal tract, it's immediately converted to, to a thing called dihydromethylfolate, okay? And that's the dihydroform that it's absorbed across into the bloodstream. Now, I'm going to back up a moment. Folic acid is critical, particularly for you women of childbearing age, because the presence or absence of folic acid can have a tremendous, in your diet, have a tremendous impact on your offspring. So make sure you get plenty of it if you're of childbearing age. Um, now coming back to where I was, it's entered the bloodstream as difolate. Now when it gets inside, there's this process of, of activation of folic acid. So it goes from, di in a, in, literally in a circle, well, wouldn't be a circle necessarily, but the way we describe it is a circle because it's, it's a loop. So the difolate enters, it goes through a series of reactions, gets converted to trifolate, uh, which is three methotrexofolate, three MTFR, and then up to four, and then up to five, five MTFR, which is where you're coming from, the five methotrexate. For the mass of the population, that happens piece of cake. Okay? But there is a small subset of the population that has a single nucleotide polymorphism. That's a single chain in the, change in the genetic sequence that sort of turns down the body's ability to activate this, to take the folic acid through that process, to take the, the difolate and convert it to tri, quadra, and then five, penta. Um, and for a small portion of the population, that is diminished. If you have, there's a couple of these different SNPs, what we call single nucleotide polymorphisms. If you have C677A, which is where just a, anyway, small change in there, you have a, you have a 30 to 50% reduction in the ability to activate this thing. There's another one a little further down called 1298C. If you have that one, you have another percentage, 10 or 15% inability to activate these things. If you have the two of them together, then you have a 70 to 90 percent difficulty inhibition of the being able to activate, and that's the group that you're representing, people who have these two genetic, I won't call them mutations because they exist naturally, genetic anomalies might be a better way to put it, and um, in that portion of the population, it can be a challenge for them to activate folic acid. But here's the, the trouble we have. We've known this for a while, okay? And there is a form that you can buy that's called 5-MTHFR, meth, 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate, and it's a 5-methyl form. But note that that is a pharmaceutical product. That is not a nutritional product because 5-methotrexate, 5-methotrexate, 5-methylfolate, 5-MTHFR, for lack of a better term, um, doesn't exist outside of this sequence, outside of the human body. So when you give that to that person, you bypass that natural sequence. Now our concern is, and everybody should be aware, you can't just run out and start taking this 5-MTHF form of folic acid because after it makes 5, it goes on up here and participates in the methylation of DNA. Okay, so those methyl groups, 5-methyl, Right, So it's just each step it's putting a methyl on. This is going to get very biochemical. But at each step it's putting a methyl group on. So you go from 2-methyl, dimethyl, to 3-methyl, to 4-methyl, to 5-methyl, putting a methyl group on. After it's done that, it goes on up and it participates in the methylation of DNA. It contributes a methyl group to the DNA. right? And the problem with that is over-methylation of DNA is a way that DNA gets potentially adversely modified. 
So the thing that you have to be careful about is if you embrace the 5-MTHFR, okay, um, you need to make sure that because it's a drug, you need to make sure that those consequences of consuming that don't become part of your life. So if you go to a specialist who deals with this, they will be able to do blood samples and watch for the markers of overmethylation of DNA or DNA hypermethylation, they call it. And you can manage that. It's not inexpensive and uh, probably isn't covered by your insurance because they haven't got there yet. But that's the situation. So for us, we said, when we first started looking at this a decade ago, we said, well, what if we just switch everything to 5-methyl? And then we began the research looking at how it's used and said, we can't do that. Because the mass of the population actually needs that step to go on in order for the DNA methylation at the top of the sequence to occur properly and to complete the cycle back. And when you disrupt cycles in the body, whether it's the homocysteine cycle or methyl cycle like this, um, it always has adverse effects. So, the interesting thing about all this, the interesting thing about all this is, have you had your gene sequence done, or your son's gene sequence? I'm compound, I am a compound heterozygous, so I have 1677-1298. My son is homozygous 1298. Oh. Well, at least he's not compound homozygous. What, okay. Well, yeah, no, compound two, compound homozygous 1298. For, but he... Well, he's I'm, I'm a compound heterozygous, so I have you're one, six, seven, seven, right. one, twenty. But he's just homozygous for 1298. Yes. He's not compound. Oh, no, 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 not six, seven, not seven, just 1298. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. In other words, <laughs> she has one of them, but because it's only on one side of the gene, it's called heterozygous, and those are the least impacted by this. She will be somewhat inefficient, but she'll be able to handle folic acid fine. Just monitor, okay? Um, her son... She has 677 and 1298. The son only got 1298. But he's homozygous, which means it's on both sides of the gene. So he will be 30 to 50% handicapped in metabolizing folic acid. So now, the reality of it is it isn't going to do him any harm to have folic acid supplementation. And you can monitor, if you're not already, you can monitor his folic acid status through that. Uh, and if you embrace the idea or your medical community suggests the drug-like approach, the thing that you can do is you can eat a lot of spinach, which has a lot of, okay, and, th and that will help. But, you know, just if, when you think about jumping to five, if you get there for some reason, remember it's a pharmaceutical. It's a drug, not, a, not really a nutrient. Okay?